एस चांद प्रेजेंट एजुकेशनल वीडियो लेक्चर्स एज पर दी ए आई सी टी ई कारिकुलम डिफिकल्ट कॉन्सेप्ट मेड इजी स्टडी एनी वेयर एनी टाइम Welcome to Ashant Academy. This is the second part of molecular orbitals concept. We are watching engineering chemistry videos, and in the previous video, we have already talked about the basic concept of molecular orbitals. We learned what is a molecular orbital and what is a symmetry function. Now, in this part, we will be looking closely into how molecular orbitals are formed and what is the Schrödinger wave function for forming a wave uh, of a molecular orbital. and what different kinds of interactions or what different kinds of wave forms it can take when molecules are formed welcome to ashan academy my name is aditya and you are watching engineering chemistry videos if you want to learn more about this topic you can refer this book from ashan publishing you can find link for ebook in the description box below there is a famous hypothesis and a theory to explain formation of molecular orbitals which is called as linear combination of atomic orbitals or lcao linear combination of atomic orbitals was proposed by lenard jones who is also associated with uh, discovery of miniature forces a type of van der waal forces which help to or more atoms to interact together so the linear combination of atomic orbitals is a mathematical feature which uses schrodinger equation and that explains how atomic orbitals combine to form molecular orbitals and the summary is that when two atomic orbitals come close to each other they combine linearly you might have heard some mathematical functions like linear function geometric function or exponential functions so exponential functions means that they will uh, multiply or they will add up exponentially geometric function also explains the same thing but linear function or linear combination mathematically represents that if there are two wave forms they will combine by simple addition as you can see here that the molecular wave form which is represented by this greek letter tau it can be represented by individual waves of a specific atom so suppose there are two atoms atom a and atom b and these two atoms are combining together to form a molecule then they might have specific atoms which must be interacting to make molecules each atom could be represented according to the schrodinger wave equation like this so this is the wave function of atom 1 and let's say this is the wave function of atom b and a molecular orbital equation would be simply a linear combination of these two now one interesting thing as i told you in the previous part of the video that when these two wave forms atomic waves when they will combine together it is also possible that when they are combining their phases are same we can call them as plus plus phase that means one wave is like this another wave is also like this so this will be a constructive or a positive combination linear combination of atomic orbitals and this will be represented by this equation rather if two waves are not having same phase that means they are having opposite phases wave functions are not identical but still they are coming closer in that case you can slightly modify this by changing the sign here and you can put it equal to ca psi a cb psi b with a minus sign so you can have both these things either molecular orbitals can be created by linear combination having addition or linear combination having subtraction now is there any difference when atomic orbitals combine in this fashion or this fashion if atomic orbitals combine to make a molecule and they have the same phase that means there is an addition is it different from 
when they are combining while having subtraction. Yes, there is a difference. And the difference is that two atoms, whether they will come close and remain associated closely with each other or not, that will be defined by in which manner these two are combining. So that leads to generation of a concept called bonding molecular orbitals and anti-bonding molecular orbitals. So let's have a glimpse of that bonding and anti-bonding molecular orbitals. If there is a positive interference or you can say constructive interference when the two will combine in the same phase that leads to the bonding interactions between atomic orbitals and this is said to be constructive. Whereas anti-bonding interactions, they represent a destructive uh, combination. So you will also imagine that suppose uh, this is one waveform, let's say I'm representing Px here and this is a Py and let's say There is a positive construct, a positive interference between these two waves and they are combining together to give rise to a new wave. So it is likely that a molecular orbital will acquire this shape. So when there will be a constructive interference, that means the upper part bonding molecular orbital take this type of shape. So what does this represent? The atomic orbitals have lost their identity now. This might be represented by a function C A psi A. This might be represented by a mathematical function C B psi B. But when they are combining, they are losing their own identities and they are giving rise to new orbital, which we can call as bonding molecular orbital. So this is basically a bonding molecular orbital. On the other hand, it is also possible that these two orbitals, when they come in close contact with each other, they do not have the same phases. Plus and minus doesn't represent the probability of electron. Remember that the probability is always high in both these lobes and probability is low or zero in the node region. So don't confuse with the probability and the sign. The sign is not used to represent probabilities. Therefore, many textbooks or many literature will shade one part or one lobe of the orbital to represent the phases instead of using plus and minus sign. Now, when this, uh, this scenario is achieved, when the two waveforms, they have opposite wave fronts or opposite phases of the wave, they are likely to give rise to waves which will be new waves or molecular orbital that will not facilitate the combining of two atoms, but the atoms will try to move away from each other. And this is called as ABMO or anti-bonding molecular orbital. So I hope that point is clear to you. When linear combination of atomic orbitals takes place, the linear combination of atomic orbitals can take place in two ways, either by addition, linear addition of two atomic orbitals, giving rise to bonding molecular orbitals. That means we call it as a bond between two atoms. And if there is a destructive interference, or I'll say there is interaction between two atomic orbitals which are not in the same phase that can give rise to anti-bonding molecular orbitals. So this is how BMO and ABMO are generated. And when you talk about various type of molecules, so the virtual space of all the molecules will create those energy levels, will create those orbitals. So that means there is always equal possibility of forming a bonding molecular orbital and anti-bonding molecular orbital. But as the bonding molecular orbital is much more stable, electrons will prefer to fill in bonding molecular orbital first rather than anti-bonding molecular orbitals. So if you are uh, imagining two oxygen coming close and forming an oxygen molecule, you can imagine this scenario happening at best, two oxygen atoms where atomic orbitals will combine to form molecular orbitals. They are also uh, likely to form ABMO, but this will be most likely empty and it will be non-significant empty orbital without electrons. It's just a hypothetical concept, but uh, an, an orbital that is having electrons means the actual electronic cloud will be formed. So you can also have that empty space or empty room always all the times in a molecule where electrons can jump or electron can shift 
during the excitation or during any other process. So electrons can move from BMO to anti uh, bonding molecular orbital and that relates with a lot of molecular and atomic phenomena which can be observed by spectrometry and a lot of other techniques. So this was about bonding molecular orbital and anti bonding molecular orbital. However, uh, there is one more thing that some electrons which are present in an atom when they are forming molecules are also not participating in any kind of bonding. It is likely that atom on electron on one atom and electron and on another atom is not at all involved when they are forming a molecule. For example, if you talk about oxygen atom, then some electrons of oxygen, they will be participating in formation of molecular orbitals, whereas some electrons on oxygen, they will never participate in formation of bonding molecular orbitals which we in general call lone pairs. So most of the lone pairs which are present on atoms, they do not participate in bond formation or construction of molecular orbitals and they are often described as non-bonding molecular orbitals. So they occupy of course another niche, their shape or their geometry of orbitals changes but they are likely to be called as non-bonding molecular orbitals. So we have bonding molecular orbitals, we have uh, anti-bonding molecular orbitals and we have non-bonding molecular orbitals when atoms combine to form molecules. Now the next important thing is whether these orbitals can have a symmetric function when they interact with each other, can they choose to have different type of symmetries? Yes, they do. So we looked at one type of concept of interaction of atomic orbitals that was in this manner. Suppose this is Px and it is combining with another Px and they are in the same phase. So it will eventually give rise to a bonding molecular orbital. But there is also another possibility that instead of overlapping in head on manner, these two orbitals can orient themselves in sideways manner, which means that atomic orbitals, when, when two atoms are coming close, some atomic orbitals may come head on to each other, some atomic orbitals may be sideways to each other and when they combine, they also give rise to molecular orbitals. But these molecular orbitals, which arise from the sideways combinations, will not have the same geometry, will not have the same energy as these will do and therefore they are defined with another term. We call this type of combinations as sigma combinations or sigma geometries. Therefore uh, we have specific type of terms which are often used like sigma, pi, delta, phi, gamma and so many more but the very often we will use two terms sigma and pi. So, Sigma molecular orbitals are basically formed by head-on overlap. They can be formed by S and S combining together. S will always form a sigma uh, interaction. So S with P will also uh, always have a sigma label. Whereas on the other hand, P and P can have sigma as well as pi. And pi uh, as well as sigma can have both BMO and ABMO. So you can say uh, that these labels can be written as sigma, sigma star, pi pi star. So star is basically representing ABMO, this is representing BMO, this is representing ABMO and this is representing BMO. Now most often when atoms combine we usually have either S or P orbitals combining but sometimes D orbitals might also participate in interactions. That means a much more complex type of orbital combining together. So what if two such orbitals are combining? So there will be a much more complex waveform that will be combining together and that will give rise to a new type of interaction and that kind of interaction or that label is called as phi interaction. So we don't generally use that as a phi bond, we often encounter 
pi bond and, and sigma bond. But if there are two d orbitals which are interacting together to form a bonding molecular orbital, then they will be called as phi. Similarly, if f orbitals are interacting, that can also be given some higher complex names. So that might be uh, beyond the scope of current periodic table or less likely to be formed. But chemists, they speculate these things. So that was all about molecular orbitals and their shape. In this part of the video, we extended the molecular orbitals and we talked about the shape and geometries of molecular orbitals. And we also clearly looked at differences between bonding molecular orbitals and anti-bonding molecular orbitals. If you want to learn more about this topic, you can refer this book from S. Chan Publishing. You can find link for ebook in the description box below. You can like, share and subscribe the channel for continuous use and regular updates. I told her.